Hamburg. Uh, so Aaron, uh, you're back from New York. Uh, how busy is New York c- comedy-wise this time of year? Pretty busy. <laughs> I did uh, 22 sets in a week a few weeks ago. Is that more than you do here in Toronto? Yeah, I don't remember. I think I used to average maybe 12. Max, like a, a very incredibly busy week would be like 15 here. Incredibly busy, but 15 is average down there. So I see you're using steam whistle tonight, no red wine? No, I stopped, uh, I pooed my pants like a week and a half ago. I was at a big club in New York, I had a really good set, and then I was like, oh, some red wine. And then I had like six or seven glasses, and I was like, oh, I'll just, I'm hanging out with comics, I'm gonna fart, and I sharted. And then I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, this is not good. So I crapped all over the toilet in like one of the top comedy clubs in New York. And I remember like wiping it up with like toilet paper, but they had no garbage there and no paper towel. So you had to throw it all down. And then I went over to another bar where I vomited and actually like full on shit my pants and threw my underpants underneath the toilet. It was close to a Larry Horowitz. Uh, yeah, I didn't do it on stage, but you know, it was uh, it wasn't a fun time. I'll tell you that it wasn't fun. Uh, so I was watching the uh, documentary Universal Language. How was how was playing in Israel? There was some of the Jews. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, very nice. Thank you. It was uh, playing in Israel was great. Not all the shows were like amazing, but I think we really we clearly left a stamp on that country because like even a year after we were still making news in their mainstream papers there. Mainstream papers? You've got more press and. Israeli papers than you have in Canadian? I have a lot of press. Like, I'm at the point now where I will turn down interviews unless they're really good like yours or like Time Magazine. But like, uh, this, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of press for some reason and I think when I do my new hour I'll get more press too. So how is new hour coming along? It's pretty much written. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I wrote an hour and then I was like, it's all about sex. And I'm like, I don't think I want to talk about sex for a while. So I wrote another hour. So you're going on a sex sabbatical comedically? I, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, no, I just want to talk about this. I, my writing took a different turn and it's, and it's still life experience, but I'd like to think of it as a little more poignant, but it's only been written. So it's going to take a while. I'm going to take a month off and uh, go into rehearsals and get it ready to get on stand up stage. Are you going to take it to any French festivals? I don't think so. There's no underbelly diaries? This, I mean, when it's done, maybe, but I, I think that I'm moving away from theatrical solo shows and more towards like spoken word and stand up in terms of solo shows. Little known fact about you, you used to be a stripper. So, is that a little known fact? I thought. <laughs> I, uh, nowadays, uh, what song, if there's a stri- male stripper out there watching this, would you not want to dance to nowadays? What song would I not? Oh, Dynamite by Tayo Cruz. Tayo Cruz. I wouldn't want to dance to that. That's a hard song to dance to. I would pick something nice and easy, like some country. Like the song that's in my head all the time is like, Baby, you're a song. You make me want to roll my windows down and cruise. You may want to come to London. They, they play that at Yucks all the time. I there. love that song. That's my best. I got that. I On my iPhone, I have the normal one. I have them live in Chicago doing it and the video. And I also listen to the remix with Nelly in it. What happened to Nelly? So we're going to play a game of hack or not hack. Okay. Okay, hack or not hack, reading a off a, off a cell phone on stage. <sighs> I saw it done for a lot. Yeah, it was, I don't know if it was hack. It was incredibly overused for a while. Like, I even saw, like, quote-unquote good comics doing, like, okay, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Hack or not hack, uh, going over time if you don't have the material. See, I don't know if these are hacking out. I think these are just bad or not. I saw a, a really well-known good female comic do double the time tanking in New York City last week. Tanking. And everyone's lighting her, and she still just went way the fuck over her time. So I don't know if it's hack. It's not a good choice. There's a short joke that I did that killed for like three weeks, and then I dropped it. Uh, I used to think I had a 7-inch penis until I bought a 7-inch Kindle. Ouch. Uh, here's one that, that I have. Uh, I'm jealous of kids with fast pictures nowadays because people know what they have. But then I rem- remind myself 50 years ago, if somebody, if if I had been alive then, that, well, they might have uh, 
sterilize me? Uh, <laughs> it's a little too dark. I live in Harlem because I love the smell of cocoa butter. Okay, uh, people will say it's awesome that I do a, a stand up comedy with Fast, but just fine, I'd like to remind them I have 23 different routines to do in a day. This is the one that I love the most. <laughs> oh, I just started thinking today, uh, like I'm, my biological clock is ticking. So I want to have a kid, but like I want to only bang like tall women to get over my Napoleon syndrome so that <laughs> no one else has to be born into this world that I've created with insecurity and steroid related baldness. <laughs> I wonder what the New York Liberty is doing right now. I love how you poised yourself to do that joke because you're sitting like this and then you're like, I wonder what. <laughs> he some yeah. Recently, uh, learned a valuable lesson in life. Never play cards with the elderly, okay? They'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll steal your money, and they'll act aloof if you call them out. I actually caught my grandma cheating in poker not long ago. I had to say something. I was like, look, grandma, you know better than anyone else at this table, all right? You know the rules. You lost that hand. Now take off your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm back here with Tyler Morrison. So yeah, how, how are you feeling, Koch Comedy Festival? How's North by Northeast treating you so far? Man, North by Northeast is treating me great. It's an awesome festival. It's uh, such a you know eclectic group of bands and comedians. And now that the comedy aspect is in, the guys who are putting it together are doing a great job. They really uh, are capturing the spirit of the Toronto city. So, so uh, you're coming in from the Muskoka area. Is this a little bit late, less laid back? Do you feel like uh, George of the Jungle in the movie? <laughs> no, I mean like I, I started out my career in in uh, Toronto. Toronto, so I'm totally used to this, and uh, it's maybe a little bit more laid back, uh, the, you know, in, in Muskoka for sure. But uh, you know, we're doing big shows up there, so you know what? Everything once you get to showtime, it's all the same, right? How does one kill time in Muskoka between sets, and how long before between sets are you usually? Well, we wait till motorcycles go by usually, <laughs> but it, you know, and then add a case of beer to that. <laughs> Beer and comedy usually goes well. And time up in Muskoka is measured in beer. In Muskoka, you know, Two Hot Girls is like the top two in town, right? <laughs> so what do you like doing in the cottage or around your house while you're there? I mean, I've been uh, cutting my lawn a lot these days. It's like I'm one of the few comedians that has a lawn tractor, which is, you know, pretty bizarre. I got to get a cup holder for my beer installed on the lawn tractor. But uh, yeah, that's mainly one of my big things up there. Saucing and cutting the grass. It's like drinking and driving, but without the risk. Why not? Why not just a beer helmet? I have a beer helmet in my trunk. <laughs> I brought it down, but it, that was for a video shoot. And. Uh, Driving. I let's see. <laughs> I let the CDOPP charge you with MWI moving while intoxicated. Well, I mean, those guys don't know what the fuck they're doing. So, <laughs> so any dark jokes that you're like really like just on the chop and wanting to tell during this thing or dark jokes? Most of your set's a little bit on the dark side. Yeah, I mean, I like to ride the edge a little bit. I mean, there's one bit that I'm, I've am i been working on. Uh, it's about uh, hot chicks the, going on vacation and how guys appreciate an all-inclusive vacation way more than hot chicks because a hot chicks' life is all-inclusive, right? So it's like... <laughs> and you always hear... Um, you know, that they can just, every year on Facebook, every hot chick ever can afford to go on vacation. Why the fuck is that, you know? It's like, maybe because if they go to Cancun, I guess they don't have to buy a return flight. Um, That's good. I have a joke about having Asperger's and, like, crowds not getting sarcasm. It's like, okay, I'm all right with that. I have Asperger's, so neither do I. I like that bit, but I don't have Asperger's, so I can't comment on that because I'm not a fucking moron. <laughs> I didn't know we were morons. I, I, I thought that was the people with Down syndrome. Whoops. Cut that. Oh, fuck you, Down syndrome. <laughs> hey, Down syndrome, I know the politically correct term is Finnish. So where is Eric Bamberg? <laughs> He's it. from Sweden, but... Yeah, we're from Sweden, the fuck. Are we uh, going to be editing this shit? Yeah, we're going to yeah. be editing this shit. <laughs> right, it's going live with the truck, right? Yeah, it's like... We should get the cameraman in on this. He looks like Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> look, get a bit... Look at this. Stephen fucking Baldwin. Doesn't he look like his eyes are sucking the money out of your fucking wallet? <laughs> More like, uh... <laughs> 
More like Val Kilmer at times. Oh, yeah, yeah, but like before Val Kilmer got fat. So there's a compliment for you, too. Oh, thanks, I hit you with the Stephen Baldwin, then I come back in like a sweetheart. But 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 he'll be back to Val Kilmer in like 10 years. I hope so. Fuck. Start drinking at North by Northeast, and that's where it fucking gets you. <laughs> I'm Tyler Morrison. Uh, unfortunately, Tony Danza couldn't make it tonight, so it looks like I had to show you guys who's the fucking boss. It's great to be here. Um, it's out of 10, probably uh, 6 out of 10 awkward, only because I know this prick, Pat Tiffin. <laughs> Give me my backpack.